yes it is visible visible, visible. visible. okay okay sir let's start sir uh every investor must operate most of the time in their normal risk posture you know we have to balance between aggressiveness and defensiveness that is right for us everybody has to be comfortable with his way of working or investing or trading or anything whatever activity they are doing and the emotional behavior makes us rush in and out of trades and make our financial market very volatile so the key lies in understanding the investor psychology the market positioning i'll cover this market positioning also if people are too optimistic or too depressed odds increase that current price level and directions are unsustainable as we have seen it happened with it stocks and the secret to making money lies in contrarian contrarianism and not to confirm to everybody else so the market status as i see it a soft landing for the us economy appear, appears to be on the cards and this is the best scenario investors could have hoped for so the despite the us treasury yields uh, curve inverting last year the consensus view was that there would be recession in the first half of 2023 but despite all the uh, all such uh, predictions the gdp growth has come up at around 2% and for the second half it is again predicted to be around 2.1% and inflation is at 3% in june so it is as good as uh, reaching their target of around 2% there there is a likelihood of a 25 basis point rate hike in july 26 uh, that fed meet and maybe a huge pause afterwards and subsequently maybe rate cuts at the year or beginning of next year but uh, we are not complaining because it is good to be wrong on such issues because if we are wrong we increase our wealth but uh, so the point is uh, issue about emotional behavior which makes us rush in and out of trades so we need more of mathematical thinking than emotional thinking in order to take our trades now i was referring to the it stocks the results point to difficult times for it companies when poor results or weak results from hcl tech nothing great in wipro and tcs but since they were expected to be poor it has been priced in and investors are now are not reacting adversely to results in addition to it results which are expected to be weak export and rural demand dependent companies are also expected to be uh, weak results companies like bala krishna which make those off the road tires two wheelers omcs okay two wheelers are expected to be weak but omcs paint companies are expected to post good results now here i would talk about persistent where the mood though remains uh, subdued and that is the good time to add because they have guided for approximately doubling their revenue to around 2 billion dollars in next 4 years due to their differentiated capabilities in case they are able to uh, produce a growth a quarter and quarter growth in this quarter of around 4 to 6% then the scout uh, the stock will bounce back also the margin growth order book maintainability has to be seen uh, the easiest way to look at this stock is in case they are able to do rupees 160 eps for this financial year and at 30 times uh it means that it is priced in the price is it's in the price now one more stock which was in uh, big news recently is supros they have multiple tailwinds at work i'll just talk a little bit about that uh there is a strong demand due to healthy growth in maruti they are the main suppliers for maruti for ac components there is also talk about introducing acs and trucks 
and for electric vehicles uh, there would be some change in compressors and engine cooling modules which will be required again subros will come into play they have a 40% market share in ac components hence it's a stock to keep a, a watch on next i will just talk about federal bank because this is one of the first bank which has come up with results it saw sequential decline in net, net interest margins and a slightly higher slippage in the retail book and the stock declined uh, because of these two reasons but uh, if you see quarter in quarter the names have declined from 3.31 to 3.15 percent and provisions are up 33 percent but in a cost of deposits environment which is rising faster than yields on advances uh, yields on advances they are giving this is likely to happen the point here for federal bank is that return on assets roa is expected to be 1.3 and with price to book at 1.08 their book uh, their book is around 117 rupees i think there is a value which budging now at around 120 levels so this is a stock again which we can keep an eye on now i'll talk about ofs a little bit about ofs Uh, offer for sale means the promoters or its owners sell their shares to raise additional funds for the company the primary purpose of selling shares to outside investors is to gain access to funds for various purposes including growth and expansion after they have initially raised funds from an ipo here the issue is that a 10% offer is reserved for retail investors vis a vis ipos where certain companies give around 35% share to the retail investors so here the retail investors are at a uh, little bit of uh, uh, behind the others because probably here the 10% is the reserved because they are not given adequate time to uh, market the uh, ipo or market the shares a investor here needs to bid at a higher price than the floor price to get the shares allocated in an offer for sale so a company is supposed to give a floor price around 2 days before the start of ofs first day is for non retail the second day is for the retail orders below the floor floor price will not be accepted by the bidding system there is no specific lot size required unlike the ipo so what you can you may bid for one share or up to your requirement that is whatever you want to bid for up to 2 lakh in case you are a retail and above 2 lakhs in case you are non retail retail investors can place bids in both retail category and non retail category so this is the lesson which i learned today uh, which i had learned in this uh, ofs was that i should have put bid in both non retail and retail category but if you bid for retail category and non retail and then you will only get up to 2 lakhs only so i or on the first day only first bid for non retail category indicative price is the volume weighted average price for all valid public confirmed bids so this is kind of a guidance to people to at to what price to uh, bid at on every day it is given the lowest price at which ofs issue gets subscribed is done termed as a cut off public clearing price now in this case on the first day the cut off price was uh, 1103 uh, rupees for non retail and on the second day because of the quantum of bids which were received uh, the cut off was at 1165 so anybody who had bid below 1165 didn't get the uh, allot now i'll discuss an uh, interesting stock which i found here this is hbl power systems this is actually andhra and telangana based company uh, as i found from the various plants it is engaged in manufacturing of different types of batteries and other products like train collision avoidance system and train management system this was in news recently it's also called kavach it's a global powerhouse in industrial and specialized battery space it is only manufactured in india for, for pure lead thin plate batteries they are used in data centers to provide critical energy for short duration it's the second largest producer of nickel cadmium batteries in the world they are used in railways and mainly cater to passenger rail and metros 
it has been uh, deploying this rain avoidance collision system and completed the deployment of TCAS over 347 kilometer in South Central Railways. After this recent accident, I think they are likely to get more orders. They have been supplying batteries for torpedo propulsion in the in the Navy. They are providing submarine batteries, which are basically lead acid batteries. HBN and Excite are the two main players in this segment. Missile batteries, most of the missile batteries used in India are designed, developed and manufactured by HBL, including battery for Agni-5. So, you know, they have a huge uh, uh, battery uh, uh, battery system to provide for. Now, they have entered into manufacturing of lithium-ion cells also recently. They have entered into EV segment with the launch of their electric drive train, mainly for buses and trucks which run with IC engines. They are doing CapEx. They are saying that they would do around 90 crore for CapEx in FI24. It has guided for 1750 crore rupees revenues in FI24, that is this year, with 15% EBITDA margins. I'll show you their PNL. They have additionally said that they will have revenues of 2,900 crores and 18% margin by FY26, that is double of what they are having now. And improving margins means they will have better profit. So it's a global powerhouse in aviation, railways, defense, oil and gas, power, telecom, and data centers. The advantage to them is that they have a focus on R&D, so they are not dependent on technology from somewhere else, or they have to do JVs. They have presence in 80 countries. And batteries are 64% of their revenues. They also export missile batteries to Israel and UAE. Now, their PNL, if you see, they had a decline around this time of 2016 17, but now again it is and up to March 2021. And but now it is improving with a more focus and uh, with electric vehicles and other things coming up and the defense uh, defense theme taking place. The point to note here is, again, the operating margins are going up and the net profit is also going up and the EPS is going uh, higher and they are a dividend giving company. So now with relation to this, as I said, in case in this last financial year, there were 1369 crore sales as a revenue. And if they are guiding for around 1700 or 1750 for next financial year and 2900 crores uh, in uh, with better margins in FY26, that means the share would double from here. Uh, so this is their uh, guidance, if you see, and their uh, division in various uh, subparts. So. Uh, there, this is a low margin business that is industrial batteries. So this is their projected revenue. They are focusing more on defense batteries and emerging rapid growth in electronics for railways and defense and electric drive trains and electronic fuses, etc. So that is going to drive their total sales and the margins because the moment you get into higher margin business, the overall the profits improve. The possible future tenders are covered. Uh, that is that uh, TCAS I had talked about. And there is a huge uh, potential because railways wanted to be deployed all over. And they are aiming to complete this by 2026 in all orders which are there. Uh, also, the railways have said that they want to equip all new trains with this torch <laughs> in the factory itself. Otherwise, it was being deployed sub uh, after the train was introduced. And this with 5G and data centers coming up. There is a huge demand for batteries for data centers and telecom sector. So it's a stock to be kept in mind. Uh, now see the let's see the chart. If you see from August 20 on, onwards, it's always been on a rise, and then it had it took off in the last two months or so, and it is trading above the 50 and 200 day moving average. Hence, the stock is rightly heated up. And it would be better in case you buy it around at 150 or 140 levels. Let's see the uh, chart of HBL power systems. If you see, 
the rsi is around 60 so which is good and there is a lower trend line so i would buy it at around 160 in case it touches the uh, lower trend line and then may again take off from there but it's a upward trajectory chart hence uh, it is a stock to be kept in mind and accumulate on dips now let's talk about genus power infrastructure the main objective of smart metering system is to enable two way communication between a smart energy meter and a head end system to enable remote reading monitoring and control of electrical energy meters so this entails is that people don't have to come to your house to take the meter reading so this is what is smart meter and you can also monitor your uh, electricity consumption and the electrical department can also monitor your electricity consumption otherwise you know there is a lot of uh, corruption and other issues so this is basically a, a government of india policy and it's good you know government of india launched this revamped distribution sector scheme rdss to reduce the all these losses of the discoms and various uh, discoms have awarded orders of up to 20 million smart meters to various companies what happened with genus power recently is why the stock came into horizon was they they, they got a strategic investor uh, in a deal with gic that is a singapore's wealth fund for a equity infusion of 5.2 billion rupees that is five, roughly 520 crores for 15% stake and setting up a platform a special work uh, purpose vehicle to take on these projects with holding of 26% in genus and 74% in gic so moment they got a strategic investor the whole the stock just shot up now what will happen is the genus would be able to participate in smart smart meter bids and the opportunity size is roughly around uh, uh, 30000 crore it would be an exclusive supplier of smart meters to this spv so this spv will work separately from the company but they would supply the smart meters to this special purpose vehicle and we all have noticed nowadays that the bidding for smart meters is picking up orders worth 180 billion that is 18000 uh, crores have been concluded while another 78000 crores or 780 billion are under bidding so what is expected is that in next two years where they have to provide all these things that is from fy23 to fy25 their revenue cagr would be 74% and their profit will become 6x six times because of the strong order backlog and pick up in execution the risk is in case the discount slow in ordering and there is a delay in execution of orders or execution challenges and high amount of competition because a uh, lot of companies are in this uh, field now uh, let's see their profit and loss what i was talking about is they had around 8000 crores uh, uh, sorry 8 uh, 800 and uh, uh, this thing uh, 80804 million in uh, this uh, last financial year and this in next two years it is supposed to become triple and the uh, net income is also supposed to become 6x hence hence that so much of interest is there in this company now it has 14% market share in the recent smart meter tenders the other companies which have which have also uh, are participating in these tenders as are there in tele smart genus aprava adani transmission secure techno electric tata power gmr gmr on friday got a contract so they are also fighting for the same uh, meters uh, projects the only thing is it's such a huge uh, huge field that companies may not be having the capacity to provide so many uh, meters and all those things but you can see the market shares of uh, these companies in front of you so even gmr is doing well and uh, the others also so the dns dns par after this uh, from 120 odd level it had a vertical rise after this deal with gic and now it has from 180 level it is much above its 50 and 200 day moving average and you can see from the charts also 
uh, the vertical rise so this is now very hot and increase in volumes also with increasing every time there is an increase in volumes it goes up but what i wanted to point out here is the last time also this company went up was in 2017 when we were having this small cap rallies at that time also so these are those stocks to be careful with but you have to keep it in horizon because this is a field where the money is moving in now i want to talk about this uh, issue about uh, implied volatility if you see this is the chart of nifty uh, of last one year if you see the nifty has been going up and the implied volatility or the india vix this is a chart of india vix india vix has been going down and it is it's now nearly uh, below 11 right now so the vix has been going down then and the nifty has been simultaneously <clears throat> going up so you can make out that they are inversely correlated to each other what is vix is an amalgamation of implied volatilities of multiple option contracts and they represent the ivs which are inbuilt into the broader markets i'll show you something else also now if we see here itc you see this stock from april 2020 to around 22 uh, april 22 the stock was in a range and consolidating and was not moving up but subsequently it took off and it has been only on the rise for the last one and a half years or so now i'll see how it impacts us now how do we use this implied volatility in our option selling or buying rising markets are usually usually accompanied by low ivs while fall, falling markets tend to be synchronous with high implied volatility we have seen with those charts of nifty and india vix that when the nifty has been rising for last one year the ivs have gone down now low level of nifty vix typically indicates complacency in the market with high level indicates fear so in case the vix goes up it indicates fear that people are expecting the markets will sell off and once the vix is going down it is also indicating complacency complacency where people are just writing options uh without thinking that is writing puts without thinking or buying calls without thinking now since the beginning of 2022 as i showed you itc has been trending upwards and is a gold mine for call buyers because it's a trending stock upwards so all the people who have bought calls would have made money in itc option buyers would be better off betting on stocks with high volatility while option sellers would pocket premiums more easily in assets with low volatility if the iv is significantly lower than historic volatility we are getting the options at a discount and can can make high returns on investment by buying such options so we have to just see what has been the historic volatility of the stock and in case the present ivs are lower then we are getting you are buying the option at a lower price so since since options are available at a discount naked option buying can yield superior returns on investment in case the present volatility is below the historical volatility similarly if the implied volatility is high it is indicative of expensive option premiums which can be pocketed by naked option selling hence when the Uh, present ivs are higher than the historical uh, data then it is better to do naked option selling and in an environment of moderately high ivs or which are somewhere near the historical ivs x sense to have covered option selling strategies and not do naked option selling so this is an important point to keep in mind so as to avoid making losses now since people were talking about chemical sector i'll just cover two stocks here today but i just wanted to show what is the capex taking place 
in all chemicals and agrochemical companies at present so if you can see there is a huge amount of capex and which is supposed which is projected for next few years also all these companies and the companies who are uh, doing capex are not doing just for the heck of it they are also they are only, only doing it because they are expecting better demand and better exports and better sales so uh, hence these are the things to be kept in mind while investing for little bit longer duration the ones we who are doing capex and are at lower lower price cycles for those where the present uh, value is low because uh, the sentiment is right now poor but it is it will change because it's now at the lower part of the cycle now i talk about two today navin florin and srf they are top picks as there is a likelihood of an imminent hfc cut uh, production cuts in european union and us which will benefit the india's fluorine based complex specialty chemical pairs now srf is doing incremental capex which is basically towards fluoro specialty fluoro polymers and hfo 1234 yf post patent expiry so they are focusing a capex towards basically chemicals within fluoro specialty chemicals sf srf is ramping up strong patented fluorinated and even non fluorinated agrochemicals intermediates three intermediates alone would command a market size of usd 300 to 400 million could look to commercialize agrochemical technicals with a market size greater than 1.5 billion usd and could target pharma intermediates for fluorinated apis launched 10 to 15 years ago moreover hfo 1234 the molecule which they are working on could provide the company a 2 billion market opportunity and tap into where it could make higher 50 to 60 percent gross margin if you do a sotp analysis one year target as given by certain brokerages is 3380 for uh, srf it is somewhere around 2180 right now now if you see srf it's uh, projected and the revenues you see it is basically got three parts technical textiles chemicals and packaging films including aluminum foil and others which are smaller now if you see here these two technical textiles and packaging films are not doing well it is only the chemicals which is doing well and there they are projecting higher revenues in future as compared to others because they are focusing on them and if you see the year on year growth also the growth expected is mainly out of the chemical part of the business and lesser from the packaging and the technical textiles part of the business but this is the projected growth and so hence this company is also focusing on fluoro chemicals part of the business only and this is the reason why the uh, the stock is subdued because the the technical textile textiles and packaging part of the business is not doing well now if you see the uh, the component in revenues the chemicals is 42% the packaging films is around 38% other businesses are 2.7 and technical textiles are 16.8% what is projected for the next uh, for the this financial year is chemicals is going to increase and it is able to increase subsequently packaging films is reducing technical textiles is also reducing and other businesses are also generally the same so they are focusing on chemicals which are going to drive their future earnings they have launched four new products in agrochemicals and one product in pharmaceutical during this year they commissioned their mpp4 facility mpp is multi purpose plant a dedicated facility for agrochemical and pharmaceutical intermediates each and thermal oxidation facility at dahej recently they commissioned a new r&d facility at bhiwadi rajasthan which will help them augment their r&d and scale up capabilities they have commissioned their second pl plant for fluoromethanes cms on 7 november 22 of 95000 mtpa it is metric tons per annum this has taken their capacity to 190000 mtpa making srf the largest producer of cms in india 
the their packaging film business faced severe headwinds during the year as number of capacities for BOPP and BOPPET came online globally. So there is a lot of competition. The company was not able to operate their plant in Hungary optimally due to energy crisis in Europe. So they are pivoting their business now from other businesses to chemical business now. Uh, the technical textile business witnessed a subdued performance during the year due to weak demand for their ny nylon tire cord fabric NTCF product. Company will continue to invest in its chemical business and capitalize on the attractive growth opportunities for this business. So this is about SRF. Now, if you see the uh, the chart of SRF, the RSI is down to around 37. But if you see the it's uh, it is it provides it's a decent support at around 2000 levels. This is the level at which one can get into this in case these declines because the market is now declining because they're waiting for this quarter's result and what is the performance and all and there is overall negativity about the chemical sector. In my view, this would be a nice level to get into this stock from here and uh, then hope for 2-3 years. So if you have a horizon of 2-3 years, you can get into this stock at these levels because if you see from the chart, these are the levels where there is a, a slope and it we saw continuous rise from uh, uh, in this stock, especially post this COVID uh, thing, the stock has been on the way up and now it is re-establishing re or resetting up at these levels again. Uh, we have discussed Naveen Florin a number of times, but I'll just do, go, with, go over it again. Uh, they are in, again increasing their HF, that is hydrogen fluoride capacity to 3x and it will help them to venture out to fluoropolymers, HFO blends. HFO is hypofluorous acid performance materials which require relatively higher quantities of HF compared to fluoro-speciality chemicals. On speciality chemicals front, company seems to be well placed to double its speciality chemicals revenue by FI26. It has a high, big pipeline of intermediates for several leading agrochemical technicals. It will be able to achieve its targets of 50% revenue from supplying intermediates for commercialized APIs given some of the APIs it supplies. Intermediates could get commercialized soon. Uh, you can take some of the brokers have given a target price of 5495 uh, to the share. It is presently at around 4400 on account of long term growth visibility from its multi year contracts in HFOs and robust outlook for its CDMO business. Now we will see its uh, financials. Uh, they are again expected to be improving. And the margins are also supposed to be improving to around 28%. And the EPS is expected to grow. And from FY22 level, it is going to be nearly three to four times now in FY26. And if you see, ROEs are also likely to grow and PE is supposed to contract. So it is going to be become less expensive over a period of time because of uh, operating leverage coming into play. Hence, it's a stock to be kept in mind. Here again, if you see, they are focusing more on cramps and specialty chemicals as uh, the, uh, the part of these are going to rise and refrigerant gases again. So they are changing their uh, structure over a period of time. And this is their projected revenues over this thing. And they have got some new 6 billion contract again, which they are increasing. And they have reduced uh, the working on this HFO and inorganic fluorides now. And they are focusing on these three aspects, crimes, speciality chemicals, and refrigerant ga gases. And this is going to derive their revenue contribution uh, in next few years. So if you see, it's approximately 20% for crimes, around 30-32% for speciality chemicals, and around 35% for refrigerant gases. And they are taking on this uh, new ca chemical contracts, which is 6 billion contract which is going to be 10 to 15 percent. So these companies are evolving over a period of time and restructuring themselves and pivoting for a future and doing capex also. Now, if we see their uh, chart, you see, again, it's a, a rising chart. And uh, we can see this trend line, lower trend line. And around 4,000, uh, roughly at around 4,000, this stock looks very attractive. So 
investors can look at in case this quarter results are not very good then it may see a certain fall and these are the levels from here to uh, here where we have to get into uh, this stock for again two to three year horizon so if you see from this trend line as to it is taking support at this trend line every time so this is a thing which has to be kept in mind i have finished uh, any questions please